back as we as we keep increasing our electric field this would come back and this would again uh join uh, with then this would again have the opposite effect and it would switch over this would be the switching region and this would, be, we would have another linear region and we end up with this ferroelectric hysteresis so let me just draw the diagram in a little bit clearer fashion so let's draw our axes let's assume that we have a Cores there, and let's draw these straight lines just so we have them as a reference. Something like, um And these are a little bit more curved out, as you can imagine. So basically, these are a, a ferroelectric hysteresis where at these points, we are completely polarized upward. And this and this point, we're completely polarized downward. And remember, this is polarization, and this is electric field. Here, as we return back, we still have mostly spontaneous polarization upward. But as I mentioned, it sort of dips down, like if you drew a straight line here. This would be the spontaneous polarization. However, the remnant polarization is a little bit less uh, due to the switching back of some of these uh, polarization uh, domains, polarized domains. So in this in this part, we're, we're completely polarized downward. In this part, we're completely polarized upward, meaning upward with respect to applied electric field. So, and if we start with a unpolled material, meaning a material which has randomly oriented polarization, as we increase as we increase our polarization uh vector or as we increase our sorry our electric field applied we're, we we switch them so we end up with some linear region and then we start switching them and then we end up with a uh, another linear region which is corresponding to the uh intrinsic effect from which if we draw a straight line back to zero electric field that intercept is going to be the spontaneous polarization however in reality some of these domains switch back and we don't retain all of the polarization which we uh, all we don't retain all the sw uh, switched domain states, so therefore some of them switch back, and therefore we end up with a remnant polarization. Uh, there's another point which I would like to mention is that where the polarization vector crosses the zero marker, uh, you know, for an applied electric field, we have. Uh, apparently zero polarization for an applied electric field we have zero polarization and what that basically means is it refers to what is called the coercive field of a piezoelectric or a ferroelectric material and the coercive field it's called EC is sort of denoted that that field which is which is uh, which causes major switching to happen in the material so as we then as let's say let's take this case that we pull the material and we are returning back on another path so we pull the material and so we go from here we go up here and we're returning down and the polarization is still behaving like a upward pulled material all along this region but then we hit this part right here we hit this part and in this part right here we see this uh, decrease in the polarization. This immediate, this immediate sort of nonlinearity occurring, and this nonlinearity occurring is sort of is characterized by this coercive field, which is, which means um, the field sort of needed to switch these domains, uh, sort of that threshold. Obviously, the threshold changed a little bit because, as I mentioned. Uh, depending on the switchability of the domains, how much they, how much field they require to switch, you may receive a, a you may have a higher or lower uh, coercive field. A material which is harder to switch would have what? Would have a hard, la larger coercive field, and that's typical of hard PZT. Hard PZT has a larger coercive field, and that's how you can sort of tell without necessarily measuring all the other properties and the actual losses and, and properties. You can tell that you have a a um, a hard PZT or a hard 
material by the coercive field uh, which occurs in the material. I'm just going to take the next few moments and recap what we talked about. First, I asked the question, so how do you know that you have a ferroelectric material? And the way you know is that you test its polarization electric field. But in reality, what you're going to be measuring is voltage and charge. And we'll go over how do you measure charge directly, but essentially in your experiment, you measure voltage and charge and you convert that. So you, you, you divide by the area of your sample and you divide by the thickness of your sample to get these uh, volt, uh, electric field and polarization uh, quantities. So, and you have to apply a large electric field. The coercive field is on the order of 700 volts per meter, volt, uh, sorry, volts per millimeter, maybe. For maybe this is a soft material, this is the electric field that you need to sort of switch the domains to maybe like uh, 2,000 volts per meter maybe for a hard material. <laughs> so you'll have to have a power supply that can provide 700 volts if you have a 1 millimeter thick sample or perhaps 2,000 volts if you have a 1 millimeter thick sample uh, if you want to actually generate these. So this is a very high, po high voltage experiment. Um, but if you're using thin films, you could just use like one volt because if you have a really thin ferroelectric, you don't have, you don't need as much voltage. So, um, and then we explain that there's some type of double uh, hysteresis loop. Okay, and we learned that I am not very good at drawing them. This is something that also we learned today. Um, so the easy way to draw them, the ideal response is that if all the polarization vectors switched at once, you just have a, a straight line here. So this this would be the course of field. If this is for a material where all the polarization vectors switch at once, but if they don't all switch at once, this switching process will be gradual. Let's draw that in a different color for clarity. The switching process will be gradual. And there will be beautiful and there'll be something like this so we have this we have this uh, polarization spontaneous and which is the intrinsic uh, domain uh, single unit cell re related polarization and then we have this remnant polarization here the uh, spontaneous polarization which I'm mentioning is not exactly equal to uh, the actual spontaneous polarization of the material but it's very very it's very close uh, uh, the reason is because that even even with a very very large applied electric field, not all of the domains can physically change direction uh, into uh, the single domain state where all the domains are pointing exactly in the same direction. However, um, for a single crystal material, this is possible. However, for a uh, polycrystalline material, this is largely this largely happens, but it doesn't happen completely. But anyways, it's a good way to measure the spontaneous polarization and the remnant polarization. Also, these are key parameters uh, that are reported and help us understand uh, the properties. For example, the remnant polarization is going to tell us the difference between spontaneous polarization and the remnant polarization is going to tell us how much of that uh, switching can we retain. So how well can this material be pulled? Uh, actually, how well can it retain its polarization? Obviously, since it's ferroelectric, it can switch. However, uh, after we have switched the domains, how permanent now are these uh, changes? Uh, this sort of helps us. So we want a material, obviously, with a large remnant polarization, uh, which helps us to experience a large piezoelectric effect. And we sort of know that from some thermodynamic relationships that we derived and we've experienced in the laboratory and reported in the literature. So in this case, we have a single domain state more or less that all the domains are pointing in one direction and here we have all the domains pointing down and the electric field is also pulling down here and the electric field is pulling up here uh, in the middle we have sort of switching happening where now some of the we start off here like that and then when we're down here we're sort of like mostly switched most of them are switched down and then by this time we're pretty much all switched in a single section so this covers again how you know what a ferroelectric you have you have a ferroelectric material and what are the different signatures which is the spontaneous polarization the remnant polarization and the coercive field 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and next time I'll briefly explain how you can measure uh, charge in the system. So how this how this experiment is actually done, um, and how you can interpret the results and understand uh, that data. Thank you. See you next time.